I just picked up some squirt guns, actually a lot of squirt guns. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna cut this off probably right here and right here. And I'll save this for a future because I kind of have an idea for this. This does screw off, so if you want to use the whole piece, um, I'm not going to because I don't want to have to deal with this interior and that, that fits snug and kind of works into what I want to do. So I'm just going to go downstairs and cut this off. Uh, I could use the handsaw, but I don't want to because I have to cut three of them, so I'm just going to use my scroll saw. This didn't go as smooth as I wanted. Uh, some pieces broke off. I need to repair. I'll have to uh, smooth some things down, make sure they're all flat and relatively the same size. If they're right next to each other, I have to really make sure they're the same size, but they're a little bit far apart, so it's not gonna be that noticeable. I'm gonna have to sand the seams. Uh, took this off, I think I wanna use these for something else. But I'm just gonna go take an emery board and uh, go all the, do all the seams. And if there's some that are ga have gaps in them, I'm gonna have to fill them in. And so that's what I'm gonna do. These are all sanded and prepped. Uh, for the most part, and I want to. I've decided I'm going to just scratch build a platform for these, and I'm just going to. This is sheet styrene, and I'm just going to score this so I can snap it. You can use chipboard if you want, and just use uh, hot glue to assemble this as well. I like sheet styrene, just a medium that I use. Gonna get to where it breaks a little bit. Work it back and forth. And come on, baby. Oh, there you go. And I have the platform. These little triangles are from my last industrial build. Uh, no point in cutting out more. Uh, I do it so often that these are just the supports. And I'm using weld on number three to glue these to the sides. Maybe. And I want to butt it up right against, right against the side because that's what I'm use for support when I glue the walls on. So this is one and a quarter inch uh, wall and I'm just going to glue it to here. It's going to go on the inside of this. I cut this a little bit longer so I can butt it up against it so I can sand it later and make the edge smooth. And right now I'm just going to start gluing this. I want to do the corner first. Use my weld on number three. And I'm just gonna do this one little part here first so I can hold it down. Make sure it's not bowing up because it is a long piece. That way it just stays down. And once that stays, get that going. And then glue the ribs, hold it down, and continue on down the line. This is how I'll build most everything moving forward. So I won't repeat the process. I'll show you what I've built. And this is just a magnetic tray I picked up online. Uh, really helps and plus my plastic doesn't stick to it. So that's a good thing too. Once this is all done I put weld on on the outside make the joints a little bit better But there's a gap right here. So what I did is I put weld on on there and then I'll just press it down just to uh, Make it a better seal and that's the nice thing about the plastic and weld on it just kind of melts it a little bit and That way I can when it comes time to sand it'll be a smoother joint Now this is all dry, I put a bottom piece to it because I'm going to mount more of the tower, uh, the tower on here. So this is overlapped a little bit, you can barely see right there where it's overlapped. So what I do now is I just go through with an emery board and I file this down to where it's smooth and I'm going to do that to all the edges and that's what I'll do in the future as well, and just to smooth it all out. I just cut this out because I don't want to waste a lot of styrene. There's gaps right here, uh, error, I forgot to sand that. Uh, so I'll probably have to fix that or hide it somehow. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand all these edges smooth. These tanks came off of a cheap squirt gun I, that I ordered online. I just ordered a bunch of them so I can use these tanks for future builds in this build. I also went through and sanded uh, one, one of the seams because the other seam I think I can hide it when I build it. But I want to kind of have it like this and stack them. So I need some type of a mounting piece that comes in between here. So I need to build that but that's kind of the idea. Also on these I glued some uh, sheet styrene here, just gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna sand it down like I do all the other things. I'll trim it down first so I don't have to do a lot of sanding, then I'll sand it to try to get it as flush as possible. So what I wanna do when I mount these is I want some pipes to come off. I want one to come down to here, like so, and then I want another one to come over top of it and go, but go down further, but I don't want it to go all the way to the ground just because I want more character down here. So I'm gonna build a little extension for each pipe and have it come out and then that, that pipe will go down into that and just kind of give it a little bit more feel for it. Plus it'll allow miniatures to go in between them to have more cover down here. 
that's what I'm gonna do on this one. I need to build some extensions out of styrene. So I constructed these three things, put the braces in here. And since it's a tall wall, I put braces up here so I don't squish it in as I apply stuff to it. I can just eyeball this, make sure it's extended over to the sides and then glue it on. I wanna make sure it's flush in the back and glue this side too. And go on the inside. And once that's on there, I'll have a piece like this that's gonna go on the front like I did on this one. And because it's gonna butt up right here, I want it to be beveled a little bit. So I'm just gonna bevel it. And I dipped it in the weld on. Probably should use a paintbrush, but this is faster and I've done this before. And then just attach this one. And I'll just make sure the front is flat. I'll sand that down to where it's all flat and then I'll glue a piece on there then I'll sand all the edges down. All right, I made some markings on this and I'm gonna glue the guns on. I'm gonna use some super glue to do it. I'm gonna glue the outside ones first. I already drew a line on here so I'd have them all even or relatively even. Just eyeballing this one too. Just get as close as I can. I may have to put a piece up at the top just to get it so it's even or where it's more secure. All right, what I wanna do now is I wanna cut these pipes down so it actually fits on here. And I cut a couple already and I, I sent them with the emery board to get the lines off of them. And I just wanna cut this last one. Just use a handsaw and just gonna eyeball it to where it's relatively close. And cut this bad boy. I'm gonna sand off the emery board. Smooth out this part of it. Smooth out the bottom. And smooth all the lines off of it. Apparently weld on number three works with this, so that's what I'm using. I didn't know that. It's nice to know. I bought these little pipes online. Um, it was a happy accident because they have a smaller diameter than the last pipes I used. All right, this is this part of the squirt bottle. I just got a bunch of them, took them off, sand them, and I'm going to glue them in here. I'm going to use the gel glue because I already tested the other glue and it doesn't work. And this seems to work. Make sure I have the sand and seam up. And line it up. This is all ready to be sprayed. Uh, this is just some more styrene work that I've done. Did these right here. These kind of took a lot longer than I thought they would just because of the detail on the inside. Did a panel, just did different things, put some more pipes on. Tried to do some work up here, but uh, didn't. So it wasn't successful, so kind of bagged that. Did some styrene pipes inside here. Did melt it with a candle. This is solder wire and jewelry wire. The jewelry wire is 24 gauge and just glued it with this super glue. Uh, I've done this on other projects before too as well. Uh, these are the lids that I used in the last project for the bubble gum wrapper. And now I'm gonna go spray it. Oh, oh, yep. We are recording. <sighs> I'm gonna paint the tanks on this all white and so they kind of tie together and kind of give the same impression. And I'm just gonna use some ceramic coat and Looks like I'll probably have to do several coats, as I thought I would probably have to. Might thin it down a little bit, just to make sure it applies better. But if it runs like this, that's fine. But I'm just gonna start, have it make sure it goes all the same direction. And this is an older white. It's gonna have little particles in it, apparently. This is an older paint of mine. But because this is gonna be worn out and beat up, I really don't care. But it's gonna take us several coats. The white wasn't covering very well. Good thing it's gonna be all gross and weathering because it just sucks. Anyway, I didn't like that white and it was a pain in the butt, so I went with the tomato on the other tanks. That's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna do a lead belcher on all the pipe work and just go from there. I used Tester's High Gloss and sprayed this just to see if this will apply 
differently and it also be removed differently. This is burnt umbar, but this is an oil wash and this is black. Doing a little bit no more than normal because I anticipate a lot of coverage. And this is mineral spirits. All right, I'm gonna start at the top, work my way down, and hopefully it's a good consistency. And yeah, it looks fairly decent. And yeah, I can tell already that the gloss is making it run more than it normally, it normally would. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, the high gloss is definitely making it run more than normal. So we'll see how that goes. I guess I add more paint to it, make it thicker. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. I added more paint to the wash to thicken it up, and I think that's working better. Looks like it's gonna get the coverage that I want, so that's good. I'm just using Q-tips and dipping it in the, the spirits to remove the, the wash. Make sure I run it down to where it looks like it's running, if it was to be grime or anything that's running off of the tanks and anywhere else. Not sure I like the gloss finish, I don't think I'll do that again. I'd rather just take my chances with paint being removed as I remove this stuff. I don't like how it is. The flat surface is a little bit more tricky when you're removing it off because you don't want to streak because then it kind of looks odd. So I'll just kind of dabble after. Uh, that way there's no definitive lines. And hopefully there's enough liquid on there that as it starts to settle or as it starts to dry that it kind of settles in non-streaky uh, configurations. This is the original tomato spice color. What I want to do is I just want to mostly highlight this dome area or where it curves just to show light refraction off of it and just get a little bit more highlight. And then I kind of wanted to streak it here and there just to show more weathering effect so it's not all a solid color underneath. I know it's not because of the because of the uh, the wash, but I still want to show different colors going on. And I'll probably do one extra highlight above that. Before I do any major weathering, uh, beyond what I've already done, I'm gonna go through and dry brush just some areas to bring them up before I hit, the, hit it with the weathering. And I'm just gonna do the pipe. This is Lead Belcher, just going back over. And it's gonna highlight the top to, just to bring out the metal color in it. Actually, I don't need to, this is kind of a loose dry brush because I can have a lot of paint on here to start out with more than I would normally just because it's the metal. Uh, just because if I spread it around, it'll apply differently. I really don't care about getting underneath it. I just want to hit the top of it. But I'm going to go through and do all the metal. This is a lighter gray than what I already have on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dry brush uh, most of the edges. But I'll, on the, this gray, I will go in a little bit, like in here, to lighten up certain spots. So, and same with here, just to give it coloration uh, to show different weathering and things like that. And as I remove paint from the brush, I'll go uh, in areas more like this. And I'll do probably do one more highlight after this. And because the stickiness, well, I ran into problems when I used the acrylic uh, gloss. Uh, it reactivated when I did the thinner and it gummed it up and it tore a lot of the Q-tip off. A problem I've never faced before, uh, but it became a nuisance and now I have hairs everywhere on this project, which is something I won't ever use that gloss again. I'll deal with paint straight out and just go that route. But I'm gonna use this to lighten up the gray in a lot of areas. And I'm doing all this before I do weathering uh, just kind of an idea. And uh, if I get too much paint on there like I just did, I can remove it with my finger. This is brick red. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to dab some off with this sponge. Well, I'm going to dab most of the paint off. I'm just going to go around the whole thing and just do sponge work on it. And then I'll come back in and probably fill up with a paintbrush. And I'll go around with the paintbrush also and do uh, rust streaks and things like that as well but I think I want to change the sponge, it's too uniform.
This is terracotta and all I'm gonna do it now is just kind of gonna speckle inside here just to give it uh, different colors of rust. I also did this on my last project as well and I, this is something I kind of do quite often. I might actually go a little bit lighter because this terracotta is kind of, kind of getting lost in the background with the white. We're on my last project where I was using a, a blue, like a turquoise, it popped really well, so I didn't have to do that, but I might do it with this project. This is Sarah from Sepia, and what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna go through and weather the entire thing with it. This is one of my favorite uh, shades to weather and to cause, uh, well, to just weather. No other explanation other than that. And especially for rust, just cause it kind of has that familiar feel to it. And I'm just gonna go through and do the entire thing. And I'll do it on the gray and like down here, I'll, uh, areas like this, I'll make a little bit darker just to create more contrast between the top and the bottom. And that way it makes it pop more at the top, in my personal opinion. But I'll use this and then I'll go through here and I'll just go in between here just to make the lines pop more. But I'll go through and do the entire thing on this. I don't want it on the raised parts, obviously, just so it doesn't, uh, I don't know, I want that to pop, that area to pop. Another thing too I'll do on the rust with this is I'll dabble in here and I'll maybe pull it up, especially on the top parts. I'll pull it so it just, once again, creates more variation and more uh, interest in it. To look like the rust is doing more. I also dab with my finger. I don't care if it pulls, especially when it's on a flat surface like this. But I've done several tutorials on rusting, or I should say several projects with rust. So you can go check those out too, if you're so inclined. Well, I know it's a little late, but uh, welcome to Plasma Scotsman. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope there's something you can glean from it and learn from it and take away uh, and use in your hobbies. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. A few things, <sighs> slow down, okay. A few things I wanna cover with this that I didn't, uh, well, one is, is I used a gloss that I've never done before. Uh, someone recommended it to me. I'm sure I used the wrong gloss, but when I used the uh, spirits to remove the oil wash, it reactivated that and just made it gummy. It tore the fine hairs off of the Q-tips, left them all over my piece, had to pull, pick them off as I was trying to paint further. And they're, some of them are painted into the project now. And it is what it is. I just, you know, I'll never do that again. I'm sure there's a better gloss out there. I'll just deal with what I did and it, that's our previous processes of not doing gloss and I'll deal with paint coming off. I was gonna paint these white, but this white was such a pain in the butt that they became red. Uh, it does have a little bit of Christmassy feel, but I don't really care, But they, because they, because green does highlight the red. Before I started painting, I did spray it flat so I could deal with uh, painting and not have that harsh gloss uh, to deal with. So I went down and sprayed it, sprayed it flat. And on some of the weathering too, I also went back with some Nolan oil and I did weather some sections with Nolan oil a little bit further. I didn't cover that either. Uh, I also highlighted the pipes with some silver just to bring it up just a tad. And I didn't cover this green corrosion. What the green corrosion is is just uh, white glue mixed with paint and mixed with sand. And then I just put it on there, dabbed it on there and it, uh, that's what the corrosion is, is just that. And, and then just uh, I mixed it with the green paint just because it makes it easier. Uh, when you have to go back and deal with it and paint and, and stuff like that. So uh, that's all I did with that. I want it clumpy to give that corrosion feel like it's bubbling and coming out. So that's what I did there. But like I said, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment to help the algorithms uh, push this information out there or this video out there. And uh, if you want to see pictures of stuff like this, 
Uh, you can go over to our uh, Platypus Cosman on Instagram and I post pictures of projects there. Uh, so you can go check those out as well and, and see those things. You yeah, have a good night. Hope everything's going well in your hobby and life is treating you well and you're having a good time in what you're doing. Oh, uh, one thing that's just kind of a tan side tangent, it's kind of cool. So my mom taught art for over 20 years in uh, high school and also junior high. And it was what interesting is my son went to an event recently and someone asked, uh, based off the last name, if he had a relative that taught at uh, Roy High. He said yes, he was an older gentleman, probably my age or a little bit older. And he mentioned that they actually have a group, uh, Chad, I'm not sure exactly what it is, that actually still gets together and talks about, and he still does art, and he still does those types of things. But they always bring up my mother a lot. Even after, since the 1970s and early 80s, they still bring up my mom and all the things that she taught them. And I thought that was really cool and it meant a lot to me that there's still individuals out there that are learning or have learned and still remember my mother and what she taught in art because she believed anybody could do art. That was her true belief and she used to always do that. And one of the things she would always do say is if you are looking at somebody's art and or something they've done, before you give a critique or anything on that, find something good about it. And find, there's always something good in somebody's artwork, whether it's color combination, effort, there's always something good. So always point those out, those things out first. And to be truthful, it really doesn't matter how good a piece is until you throw it in a competition. Until it's been thrown in a competition where you're putting your, where you're putting all your cards or you're trying to compete with other people. Everybody's art is personal and it's more, it's, it's, it's their art and you should find good things in art. And that's what my mom, mom, my mother used to always teach is just find those good things in artwork. And that's always stuck home with me. And that's why I always say the comment I do at the end of my, at the, at the end of my videos is my mother always believe someone could could do art no matter what their skill level or their talent they always she always believed someone could do that and so that's why i say that because it, it's a big deal and that was just a testament to me that my mom has had a lasting impact on people even if it was in high school that they still bring her up to this day and the things that she taught them so that was cool and uh anyway just want to share a little story but you have a good night and hope everything is well with you and i will see you on the flip side <gasps> ciao bye